What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, the extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. All right, this is our first game back after our break and i hope this works in podcast form because i'm basing this on a board game that i loved when i was a kid called mastermind each player will try to break his opponent's secret code by a master stroke of cunning and logic because they are playing a game that truly earns the name it bears mastermind a masterpiece among games in original advanced and travel versions did you ever play this as a kid i did not play mastermind oh it was a board game i thought it was a game show no oh this is a board game oh okay yeah so what it is is you have it's two players one of them is the code maker one of them's the code breaker so i'll be the code maker you'll be the code breaker uh the difference between what we're doing and what the actual game is is in the game mastermind i would pick like a random assortment of of like four different colored pegs and make a sequence so i would pick like red yellow blue, green, and then you would have to just guess sequences of colors, and I tell you how many you have correct in the correct position and how many you've guessed correctly but aren't in the correct position and how, you know, like what you just... I see. So you're doing like process of elimination trying to figure out what the code is that I have hidden. I got him. How did he do it? Now I'm the mastermind. Step aside. Okay. But the difference is... I'm going to be giving you, I'm going to read you a list and you've got to pick uh, four options from whatever list I give you and put them in the correct order of like different horror facts or okay. trivia. So you're going to have a bit more to go off of rather than just guessing colors. There's, so this is like a trivia spin on this game. A little, yeah, kind of. Okay. Mm-hmm. This game that I was not aware was a thing, but hopefully some people will be familiar with it. Yeah. And it's also a little bit like when we did our live show at RTX, we had... Yeah. Uh, we were putting, we, I had made lists of things and we were trying to guess it's like number the of jump orders. scares in a movie. And I had to, uh, arrange, we had audience members come up and hold poster boards with different movie titles yeah. on them. And I had to arrange the people in the order from, from most, least, yeah, yeah, most, yeah, least to, to most least jump, jump scares. scares. Yeah. And we did horror actors in order of height. Also. That's right. That was a really fun one. Yeah. So <laughs> Anthony we're, Perkins, taller than you'd expect. He's a very tall man. So I've come up with four different categories, and if you figure them out right away, I don't. This is just a fuck around episode because <laughs> I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, so we'll see how long it takes you to figure these out, and if this even works in audio form. Okay. So you know, it, it's much more interesting than uh, I didn't realize that when you were explaining the game to me earlier. I didn't realize that it was a board game with just like colors. Yeah. And the thing is, you can make it like various degrees of difficulty too. So the code maker can repeat colors. Um, You can even play a version where you use blanks as an option. Ooh. Uh, So you just don't put anything there. Yeah. So it's just like kind of a process of elimination kind of. Okay, here. Yeah, let's see how this goes. Oh, by the way, while we're doing this, I highly encourage if you're listening to this, not while you're driving, uh, but if you're at home, just chill and listening to this, uh, get out a pen and paper and play along and keep track. Because I'm having James write all this stuff down it's basically it's playing sudoku almost exactly it's, if you're into sudoku or logic, logic puzzles game, yeah play along pause it if you want to and try to see if you can beat me in the number of tries it takes you to get it right yeah. you know okay so what we're gonna do our first category is i'm gonna read you a list of actors and we are gonna try you're gonna pick the four actors that were the youngest the first time they played the villain that okay. they are famous for. Okay. And then you'll put those in order. Got it. Okay. So this is age playing their signature villain for the, for the first, first time. time. Okay. Yes. And uh, you will give me how many options? Eight. Eight. Out of which I just need to get the youngest four, youngest four and in put order. Them in order. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's see how this goes. We have. Brad Dourif as Chucky. Okay. We have 
Doug Bradley as Pinhead. Okay. Jeffrey Combs as Herbert West. Nice. That's a nice anchor because I have a, a good idea of how old he was. Bella Lugosi as Dracula. Ooh, interesting. Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster. Okay. Hmm. Warwick Davis as Leprechaun. <laughs> and Robert England as Freddy. I got Brad. Oh, De- Anthony Perkins. Oh, Norman great. Bates. Okay. I thought I read him already because we just yeah, talked just about him. him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I need to find the four youngest. Yes. And uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. I'm pretty sure that Warwick Davis is going to be one of the four youngest. He was um, relatively young in the first Leprechaun movie, which was like 93, I think. 93, yeah. Yeah. And I believe he was a pretty young... He was already known because he, as a child, he played an Ewok in Return of the Jedi. When was Willow? Was that Willow before? was also in the 80s. Yeah. So he, you know... He, it makes sense that he came to that role as a young man because he had already had a lot of film experience. So if he were a child, or if he was a child in Return of the Jedi, that was 83. I would say he was probably no older than like 13. So he would be in his young, early 20s, 10 years later. So definitely going to put him on there. Now, also, yeah, I always forget Leprechaun's name is Lubden. Uh, that's what the internet says. Oh, really? It was Is that never, just so weird? That's not like a movie thing. What a weird thing. I know. Sometimes the internet's weird. That's like how, like, if you're a Disney fan and you look up stuff about beating the beast, because in the movie, the prince doesn't have a name. He's mm-hmm. just the beast. But Disney fans just gave him a name and it comes up on Wikipedia. Yeah, okay. Yeah, weird. it's 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 especially with those fucking, like, very specific wikis. Like mm-hmm. horror wiki mm-hmm. or leprechaun wiki, I'm sure there's one of, and and on those sites, kind of like fan head canon just becomes canon, and so you really gotta, you know, if you want to speak with authority, you gotta take those things with a grain of salt and do your own research. So yeah. that's why I never referred to him as Lubden in the kill counts. Um, okay, so Warwick Davis is definitely gonna be one of the four. Robert England, I don't think will be. He was, I believe, late 30s, but maybe even early 40s when he was Freddy. Um, uh, although that doesn't make sense because now he's in his 70s and that was, eh, okay. It's hard. It's so hard not to just converse with you about these things. Right, facts. yeah. Don't worry. I can stream of consciousness this. Brad Dourif similarly had a long career before playing Chucky. Jeffrey Combs was around 30 when he was Herbert West in Reanimator. Doug Bradley, I have nothing to go off of, honestly, other than his current age, which I believe is in his 70s. Uh, but that was later in the 80s than, like, Jeffrey Combs. Um, da, 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 da. Bella Lugosi, I have no idea. Same thing with Boris Karloff. So, and then Anthony Perkins. <sighs> he looks so boyish, but he could still be, like... Okay, I'm glad I picked a handful, like, of these that are just wild cards. Oh, for sure. For you. Yeah, I was yeah. very concerned that you would just kind of know all these already. I'm going to take a stab just so we can move forward and I can get some more information to okay. do this. And this isn't a guess for what order these are in too because I'm yes. going to tell you how many you have in the right So spot. Okay, so number one youngest, I'm going to put Warwick Davis. Number two youngest, I'm going to put... God, it's the classic actors who are really throwing me off. Uh, Anthony Perkins in number two. Uh, number three youngest, I'm going to say... Oh, man... Was Dracula oh, I, was Dracula an old guy? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with three Boris Karloff. That's a lot of makeup he can hide behind. And then shit, Dracula feels like an older person. Brad and Doug also seem like they would be older, so I might have to go with Jeffrey Combs for my number four spot. Okay, so read read that order again. Number one, Warwick Davis. Number two, Anthony Perkins. Number three, Boris Karloff. Number four, Jeffrey Combs. Okay, you have two in the correct position. Okay. One of them is correct, but not in the right position. Okay. That's it? That's all I'm giving you. Okay. I feel good about Warwick. Being number one. Two in the right position is not bad to start off with. Yeah, I'm impressed. Thank you. Um, Hmm. But that also means I'm missing one correct answer from this list. That means one of my answers is wrong. Uh, I don't... Oh, Bella's... Bella's really throwing me off. Okay. You know what? I, should, I feel like I should have a finite number of, of submissions. Yes. 
Okay. Because otherwise it's like, oh, tweak around the edges and then just do it until I get it. So let's say five. Does that sound okay? Sure. Okay. Okay. So that was number one. Okay. I'm going to stick with Warwick and Anthony as number two. I'm going to put Jeffrey as number three as the person I had right but in the wrong spot. And then for four, if Boris is wrong based on this logic, logic, I'm going to say he also is behind a lot of makeup. I'll say Doug Bradley for four. You have all four correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Warwick Davis. Was, uh, let, me, let me take okay. a shot of these ages. Warwick Davis, 23? 23, 23 yep. Okay. Uh, Anthony Perkins, 26? 28. 28, okay. Uh, Jeffrey Combs was 30? 31. 31. And then I know, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hey, I'm 31. Doug that- Bradley, how old do you think he was? Tough to say, but uh, 34? 33. 33 is Pinhead? Yeah. He has such authority in that role. That's why when I when I look, because I was just looking up different act horror actors, I want to find some that maybe seemed really weird. Yeah. That was one that I thought was bizarre. That's great. But it makes sense. Like, he's still, you know, like around doing shit. Mm -hmm. I think that's why when... The first time we heard he was at a convention, we were like, oh, Doug Bradley, we got to meet Doug Bradley. Because I just, for some reason, I think he's way older than he is, I think. Yeah. Um, the, Do you want to try and guess the next four? Who oh. do you want to think is next? Who do you think is next? I'm not going to like, we're not going to keep yeah, yeah, reorganizing yeah. these. Uh, ne- it's, again, the Universal guys are throwing me off. Is Boris Karloff next? No. Okay. Robert England is next. And he was probably, what, 40? 37. 37 is... Uh, yeah. Kruger? And by the way, these ages I did by release year. This is release year so maybe minus it, birth. So like, give it some cushion yeah. on either end. They could have been a, a year younger yeah. based on they when could have, it was they could filmed. have a late birthday, and that changes. Mm-hmm. You know, but sure. this is you know. So Robert England at thirty seven. You said. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I would say uh, Brad Dourif at Brad Dourif. Yep. Uh, Forty. 38. 38 when he was Charles yeah. Lee Ray. Oh, man. It's, you know, guys, I'm sure there are plenty of young listeners who are like, yeah, that's that's old. But like when you're approaching that. <laughs> yeah. And- <laughs> it's, like, it's just like, oh, man, my whole life ahead of me. Uh, okay. So, yeah, those uh, universal actors were older. Was Boris the next one? Yes. Boris Karloff, 44. 44. That's and then Bella, let me guess, 47? 49. 49 he when he was Dracula, Dracula for the first mm-hmm. time? For the first time. How many times did he play Dracula? Do we know? Do you know? Offhand? Two. Oh, okay. Yes. I think two. There's more than one, though. More than once. Yes. Okay. Because our next category. Uh-oh. The same actors. Oh. What ages they were when they played their villain in film the most recently okay played their villain in film so not any fan films or anything not a tv show so we're excluding the goldbergs Goldbergs, yeah robert england (laughs) i had i had to like make a rule for what constitutes and no like youtube videos right no no no. this is this This is is feature films films, even if they're made for tv okay these are films though okay and playing this playing the the yeah the same character and so, it's how old? How old they were. Okay. And let's do um let's do the four oldest. Four oldest. F- who are the four okay, oldest? Okay, that's that's a good playing spin. these characters most recently. Okay. Well, I can do some math here to figure things out. Okay. So I am going I don't know if that's cheating. I had that thought, but I don't know if it is. Okay. Because it's logic. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah. Sure. You. I mean, you kind of have to know like what year these there, sequels. There are some that I can know pretty solidly, especially since we went over the answers for the first one. So for instance. Oh, damn. We should have done that. <laughs> okay. Brad Dourif, we said was, uh, and you don't have to confirm anything here. I think we said was 38 when he was Charles Lee Ray. That was 88. Uh, that was 1988. And he just played Chucky in 2018 so that would be 20 years later no 30 years later jesus uh so that's he was 68 when he was chucky the last time is my uh math um jeffrey combs was 31 when he was in reanimator which was 1985 and then played uh the character in the 2006 beyond reanimator so that's 21 years later so that's 52 that seems younger, but I guess it's been a while since he was Jeffrey, uh, since he was a uh, Herbert West, which is 
Sad. Uh, Warwick Davis, last time he played Leprechaun was in Leprechaun Returns to the Hood. That would have been 2003. I'm sorry, you mean Back to the Hood? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Back to the hood. The hood. Uh, or is it the with it's THA? The it's THA yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I believe that was 2003 or six. I can't recall. Let's say six. And so that would have been 13 years after he was, so that he would have been only 36. Interesting. Uh, he's not going to make it. Uh, Boris Karloff. Um, oh, Anthony Perkins did play. Because uh, he played that role much later in life because those sequels came out in the 80s and that original was obviously 1960. So we're adding like 25 years roundabout to his age of uh, he was 28. So that would be 53 thereabouts. Doug Bradley was pinhead in a lot of sequels, but not the most recent ones. I'm going to take a stab and say that he played the role last maybe six years ago. And so if that's the case, uh, 87, <laughs> I hope this math is interesting. I know. It's funny because like I'm I'm looking at this list on your phone because my battery is going to die, but I also just now have my phone up. And I was like, I'm double checking something. I, it's, I had it correct, but like I just want to make sure these are all. <laughs> okay, but before I get too much in the weeds with the math, let me just take a stab. At yeah, this. please. Yeah, because <laughs> you're you're killing me. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. Top uh, four, four oldest. Top four oldest. Sixty eight's pretty old. I'm gonna put Brad Dourif as number one. Chucky, uh, number two. I'm going to say, um, <laughs> Bella because he was already a little older when he first played the role, and. On that same note, for number three, I'll put Boris Karloff. And for four, it's either Anthony Perkins. Ooh, Robert Ingram was pretty up there. And, or Doug Bradley. I'll say, uh, di- nope, Anthony Perkins. Okay, what is your top four again? So my top four, oldest. Number one, Brad Dourif. Number two, Bella Lugosi. Number three, Boris Karloff. Number four, Anthony Perkins. You have two in the right spot and one that's correct, but not in the right spot. Same as last Same time. Same as last time. Nice. Okay. I'm sticking with Brad for number one. That seems safe. Uh, the other one in the right spot. I feel like yet again, I got the, the top two right, maybe. So Bella. And then if you're saying, I don't know how much, much Boris Karloff played Frankenstein's monster, but let's stick him at number four, and for number three, that would mean Anthony Perkins was wrong. Uh, let's say Doug Bradley for three. Okay, so read read that again. Number one, Brad Dourif. Okay. Number two, Bella Lugosi. Number three, Doug Bradley. Number four, Boris Karloff. You have two correct. Not even in the right nope. spot? <gasps> yeah. Wow. You moved one out. Oh, shit. Okay, this is where the game's rules come into play, and yeah. I have to figure out how I fuck this up. Read, sorry, read that second one. Let me make sure, double check that. Okay, that's number what one, happened. Brad Dourif. Okay, number two, Bella Lugosi. Okay, number three, Doug Bradley. Number four, Boris Karloff. Yeah, you only have two right. Okay, two right that are in the right spot. Wait, the two that I have right are in yes. the right spot. Oh. But the other two, the one there, there was one you had correct last time that wasn't in the right spot mm-hmm. that you tossed. Like it's not okay. Yeah. Well, then that means that the two, the the number one and two are correct. Brad Dourif and Bell Lugosi. You did just tip your hand there by telling me that the one that I got I wrong. I know. Yeah, I didn't realize that. It- <laughs> well, I, th- I thought you would have figured that because you didn't change. But I could have possibly. Yeah, I just yeah. had one of those wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Logic. Okay, so that just means I need to figure out three and four. And because I moved him off the list, Anthony Perkins is correct. But I had him in number four. So now he's number three. This is like Sudoku. So... My list for I'm sure. I'm shocked you never played this as a kid. I love this. This game. this is right up my alley. Uh, so because I love logic, man. So I can say with almost absolute certainty that number one is Brad Dourif, number two is Bella Lugosi, number three is Anthony Perkins, which leaves number four, which is not going to be Bo- Boris Karloff. It is not going to be Doug Bradley. 
I am going to have to say that it's Robert England. That is correct. Yeah. Those are the top four. Yeah, damn. I wish I didn't accidentally give you that hint. But that's okay. We're doing okay on time. So I won't have to bullshit <laughs> a bunch of padding for this episode. Okay. Yeah. So we've got Brad Durf as Chucky. Was he, he 68? 67. 67. Okay. And Cult of Chucky. Yeah, I'll, I'll read what movies these all were too. Cool. Thanks. Uh, Bela Lugosi as Dracula. Uh, 66. 66. Years old Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I figured it would be an Abbott and Costello yeah. one. <laughs> 66 years old. That's so Just playing. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Anthony Perkins is Norman Bates. His last appearance. Do you know how old he was? Uh, I'm going to guess 55. 58. 58, okay. Psycho 4, which was a made-for-TV movie. In the early 90s, I believe, right? Yeah, but that's why I specified mm-hmm. also made-for-TV. Oh, for that's TV. fair. Okay. Robert England is Freddy. 56. And Freddy versus Jason. Freddy versus Jason. Um, I'll, do you want me to just read the rest of these? Yeah, or do please. You wanna, okay, so uh, we've got Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster. He was 52 in Son of Frankenstein. Okay. I thought it would be another Abbott, but okay. Um, Son of Frankenstein. No. I'm, well, let me, let me see. Because that's what I was like double checking. Like, who's playing? No. Yeah, I was going to say he didn't play Frankenstein's monster in uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. No, because for a minute, Glenn Strange. A year ago, I knew all this when we watched. Well, yeah, I know. It's just Frankenstein movies. There's yeah. so many of those movies that I always forget who's playing who. And then at one point, you have Bela Lugosi playing the monster. Yeah, and it's, yeah. They like all swap shit around gets rules crazy and shit. I remember though, it was great because uh, we watched a bunch of them before going to Halloween Horror Nights because they had. A universal monster maze yeah and because we had watched a bunch of them and i had just learned all this stuff i was doing that live stream with crypt tv on the red carpet for halloween horror nights and since it's a live stream that just stays up for an entire hour i had to fill time between people coming up for me to talk to them in interviews and so at one point i filled a solid five plus minutes <laughs> just talking about the frankenstein series and who played what characters when and i remember i finished and the people next to me, because we're all jammed in there so we can like get interviews one by one. The people next to me on either side were just like, wow, how <laughs> did you do that? And I was like, I don't know, man. I talk a lot for a living. <laughs> yeah, he's Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, Bela Lugosi's Frankenstein. I was I was trying yeah. to remember. I was like, what? Because I know he's also Igor uh-huh. in like a exactly. crazy performance, if you've ever. I forget which one that is. That was the second one, I think. So that would, uh, <laughs> instead of Son of Frankenstein. It, it no, a... he's not. A, it's um Ghost of Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Right? That was one that we watched. Was that where the, they transfer the brain or whatever? I think that's Frankenstein meets the wolf, man. <laughs> okay. Hey, I want to talk about our sponsor this week, Kitty Poo Club. Yeah, we're back at the Kitty Poo Club to talk about cat litter. I love having a cat. Lucy is, James and I are obsessed with this cat. It's sad. Like, I think if everyone knew the full extent to which we were obsessed with this cat, you would maybe think less of us. The thing that we don't love about having a cat is cleaning her stinky poop. Um, Her poop's really bad. I don't know if there's any other way I can put it. I hate cleaning the litter box. That's my job, actually. I get that lovely job to do every single day and I I mean it's gross litter's dusty to scoop and change and even if you get a liner for the litter box then it's just like plastic waste and it's all just yuck there I feel like there's never been a very elegant solution for cat litter but kitty poo club is a delivery service for cat litter I think this idea is so cool. Every month you get a cardboard litter box. It's recyclable, high quality. It's not going to leak or fall apart. Oh, and they also have fun designs on them for every season, which I think is very cute. And when the month is up, you just recycle the box and Kitty Poo Club delivers another one right to you. So now you don't have to change the used litter. Amazing. You can customize your order based on how many cats you have and they have a no risk guarantee. You can cancel your order at any time. Right now, Kitty Poo Club is offering you 20% off your first order if you set up auto shipping by going to kittypooclub.com and entering promo code DEADMEAT. One more time, go to kittypooclub.com, enter promo code DEADMEAT to get 20% off when you set up auto shipment. 
kittypooclub.com, promo code DEADMEAT. Our other sponsor this week is HBO Max. Look, the holidays this year are going to be weird, maybe even pretty lonely for a lot of us out there. So luckily, HBO Max has tons of stuff for you to snuggle up with and spend the holidays with. You can binge your favorite movies, binge some TV. HBO Max has what you're looking for. I honestly kind of want to watch Succession again. It's not really a holiday show at all. Not even a good family show. Not a not a feel-good show really at all for the holiday season, but I just love it so, so much. James and I actually have two of our best friends living with us now for the foreseeable future because of COVID and we miss having friends. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of go through what HBO Max has with them. We're already making a, kind of a spreadsheet of things to watch over our Christmas break, which I'm very, very excited about. It's going to be a very cozy Christmas. So if you want to try HBO Max, go to hbom.ax slash podcast to get cozy at home this holiday season. And again, that's hbom.ax slash podcast. Check out HBO Max. Stay home this holiday season. Snuggle up with the awful family from Succession. Or an actual Christmas movie, if you're not a total weirdo like me. Okay, this one's fun. Uh-oh. This is my source for this one is a study. Study, quote unquote. <laughs> I guess it's a, it's a study. They did the work. Uh, from 2019. <laughs> By the website, Mr. Skin. You know Mr. Skin? Of course. Because okay. was it Knocked Up where they have the Mr. Skin? Uh, oh, my God. And they do yeah. like the face. They're like, Mr. Skin, you know? That's right. Uh, this is their, they, out, out of their database, they came up with the horror franchises with the most nudity in them. Dude, I was going to suggest this to you as one, but then I didn't. Really? Yeah, but that's funny. You know what? I think in college, one of the things I spent my small amount of income on as a college student was for a brief time a Mr. Skin subscription. Oh, no. Well, you paid for this <laughs> academic study. Yeah, exactly. Uh, can I write this off now? <laughs> right. You can write off your uh, retroactively your Mr. <laughs> Yeah, back they have, like, in, memberships like, or what? What? They have, like, memberships? Yeah, it's like a subscription. For what? Just for Here's where all the nudies. Yeah. Nudies. Listen, the internet was a, diff- a slightly <laughs> was, different place yeah, in was, 2007, you know? Um. Okay, so this is the to- their top nine, and it's not top ten because te- number one on this list, technically, is the Witchcraft series. What the fuck which, is that? I know. It's, it's like... Horror, but it's tech. I mean, it's basically like direct porn? to video softcore porn. Softcore, yeah. Okay. And I never hear it discussed I've along never, with horror yeah. series, so I'm I'm just eliminating that from the list because Fair. that's an unsatisfying number one to like, you know. Yeah, that would suck. So this is why this is a top nine. Do you think I know the other nine? Oh yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, still same thing. Top four that I have to figure out, or yes, let's okay. do. Yes, the top four. I'm going to read you the series. My options, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right. (laughs) This is, you've got Silent Night, Deadly Night. Oh, boy. Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm Mm-hmm. Wrong turn. (laughs) Friday the 13th. Wait, what year was this study done? 2019. Okay, cool. Recent. Hellraiser. Mm Mm-hmm. Piranha. Oh. Amityville. Mm Mm-hmm. I know that surprised me too. Yeah. Hostel. Huh. Is that eight? One, two, three, four. Five. Yes. Halloween. Okay. Uh, one question. Do you know what their measurement is? Is it number of scenes? Is it screen time? This is I. It's I think it's measured by scenes because that's the. Like, the, I have basically, after each movie here, I have the amount of movies in the series followed by the number of nude scenes. Okay, so, so number of scenes, scenes with Not nudity. like minutes of nudity. Got it. And it's not an average of, of like, uh, for the franchise, because, like, like, Hostel, for instance, only has... Movie. Yeah. I No, this it's, is it, just... It's cumulative? I think so. Okay. Because, yeah, like, for, like, the Amityville, I don't remember any nudity in that first no, movie. No, of course not. But there are 10 sequels that we have not seen. Right. Who so knows I think what it's, happens it's in those? Just, it, they get weird, I guess. Okay. 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 This is fun. Top four. Top four. Which ones have the Cumulative most? 
amount yes. of nude scenes, scenes. Of scenes with nudity in them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wrong turn may have to be number one if this was just done last year and that fucking last movie is basically porn. <laughs> so wrong turn I'm going to put as number one right now. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is on their list of top not. I That is not going to be in the top four. There is not that much nudity in those movies, to be honest. Uh, more implied nudity. Piranha has some fucking, you know, that first movie is like kind of an exploitation movie because it's Joe Dante working still as like a Roger Corman protege and it's just like jaws with tits <laughs> uh the first scene is skinny dipping and then you get into the one like the one we watched with whitney for the commentary track that and that just has Piranha 3d the, 3D. no yeah that was just 3d and it has chicks swimming around naked and oh. the sequel to that is piranha double d or whatever i see so we that's, haven't watched that one we have not watched we piranha somehow didn't watch three double d or whatever i could have sworn that was what we watched no, we watched there piranha 3d exactly wow. so based on that i'm gonna have to put that in my top four uh silent night deadly night has a lot of scenes with it. those first two have a lot of like There's six movies of silent night deadly like night. i know yeah. that, like i <laughs> yeah. know that but i still can't believe i think because so many of those just blend together. Well, you didn't watch some of them because I remember, I think I was like recovering from some kind of medical procedure. I watched. You just binged I those. Binged I binged those. I couldn't. Yeah. Watch those sucks. all in a row like you that. You need to watch four and five because they're so bizarre. That's the puppet one, right? Like four the... Four is the feminist bugs. With... Yeah. I, okay. I, watched, I watched some of that one. And then, okay. I don't think you watched five with Mickey Rooney as like an evil. And he built an android. No, I son. watched some of that one with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's those what are... I was asking. Yeah. Like it's like the puppet. I don't. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah, gonna. What the fuck? Uh, Hellraiser is. How does that series get to that point? I don't know, but I love it, and I'm so sad that those kill counts did bad because that series is so <laughs> it's fucking so weird. weird. Uh. Okay. Hostel also very booby. Damn. I'm only doing the top four, and of course, Fry the Thirteenth has a. This, nudity in almost every movie just not number six damn girl this is a tough one uh i might even have to leave silent night deadly night out hostel only has the three move <sighs> fuck me okay i'm right, going to go guess okay my guess is number one wrong turn number two piranha number three hostel number four friday the 13th you have okay. Read that again. Number one, wrong turn. Number two, piranha, piranha. Number three, hostile, and number four, Friday the Thirteenth. You have three correct, but they're in the wrong spots. Okay, I can work with that. Yeah, that means one of these is wrong. I feel great about wrong turn. Shocked that it's not number one. Um. God, I'm thinking Friday the 13th maybe doesn't belong on this list, which is the the thing that really throws me off is Amityville and I guess Hellraiser. Wait, like what happens in those sequels? Amityville especially, yeah, because at least with Hellraiser, the first movie you watch and you're like, oh yeah, I could see how that. Of course that. there would be nudity, in the, but like Amityville, <laughs> why the fuck is there ever? Actually though, Margot Kidder, I think actually does get topless in that movie. Oh, but it's probably, isn't it like just kind of, it's like it's not as like husband and wife are going to bed. It's not like super exciting nudity. I think, I think they titties. do make love, but like, it's, it's not like a, you know, it's not like a, it's just kind of like gauzy seventies, like married couple. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Teenage yeah. camp counselors in the yeah. woods. Yeah. Maybe that's um, why I don't even remember it. Cause it's just exactly. It's so exciting. like matter of fact, instead of more like a, uh, a uh, uh, exploitative yeah. or gawking um so that's thrown me off hellraiser the thing is has like what 11 movies so that might add to the accumulation of scenes okay uh i'm going to remove it feels wrong it feels very wrong i'm gonna remove friday the 13th from my four which is shocking because it's like the the quintessential slasher and there are always boobs in it um and I'm going to replace it with Hellraiser, I guess. But, of course, I have to reorder these. So, uh, 
working under the assumption that wrong turn piranha and hostile were correct but in the wrong order that means all three of them have to be moved to different spots i'm going to put hostile as one wrong turn as two hellraiser as three and piranha as four you have two that are correct but in the wrong spot and then one that's correct okay 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 uh so i have the same number of correct ones as my first guess but not necessarily the same three that i had for instance it's possible friday the 13th was correct and maybe piranha doesn't belong on this list man hostels throw me off because there's so much nudity in it like Every other scene in that first movie has nudity. But that's the thing, though. And, like, I'm I'm just, I'm not giving anything away here. I'm just thinking, like, the logic. Because I don't know how, like, th- like, doing a study like this is weird because it's so, <laughs> like, subject, like, what is a nude scene if, if it's just continuous nudity throughout a bunch of stuff? Is that then, like, one nude yeah. scene? You, so I don't I don't. Or if, like, know. it's in the background or on a video. Yeah, that right. I don't show. know what counts. I want to know more about their their method of study. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too. Uh, you know what? Okay, maybe Hostel's not the first one. Maybe Wrong Turn is correct at number two. Because Wrong Turn has so much that I feel like it's got to be up there. When you were editing those, every time I walked in, it was just titties. Every fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. And then that last movie, especially. Is, is there just, any male nudity in those movies? Or is it just boobs? Uh, there's never any dick. Uh, maybe there's some man ass. I don't think so, though. Mm. Maybe a little bit of man ass. I'm trying to think if there's male nudity in any of these. Uh, does Hostel have some? If anything did, I'd expect Hostel to. Or maybe that first Piranha movie. Does anyone like Get skinny through. dippers hang yeah. on a little bit? Um. Okay, I'm going to stick with wrong turn as number two. I am going to... I got to figure this out process of elimination when I got wrong. Uh, I'm going to maybe remove Piranha. And so I will put... Oh, wait. That doesn't make sense. Er, Okay, never mind. I will do this. (laughs) Friday is number one. Wrong turn is number two. Piranha is number three. And uh, Hostel is number four. Okay, one of them is correct and in the right spot. Okay. And two of them are correct, but in the wrong spot. Shit. Oh, this is real hard now with that information. Your guesses are very interesting. <laughs> Just what you're deciding to change around is very interesting. So my second and third guesses each had one thing in the correct spot. But that doesn't necessarily mean, even though I had wrong turn in number two for both of them, that that is the correct one. <laughs> It is possible that, for instance, uh, I had Piranha right as number four and then Friday right as number... Here comes Lucy. (laughs) Okay. What if Friday's wrong? What if Hellraiser's wrong? And what if Silent Night, Deadly Night... Oh, wait! Halloween has the Rob Zombie ones! Oh! All right, I'm gonna... You gotta make a guess within the next minute. Okay. Okay. Okay, dude. And by the way, if I read these answers and anyone has any disputes or complaints, um, don't <laughs> at me at Mr. Skin or whatever their Twitter is. <laughs> I didn't compile this this data. Okay, holy shit! That Rob the Rob Zombie realization put sh- catapults Halloween onto this list. So, uh, this and don't yell at me if this logic doesn't make sense. I'm under a time crunch here. Number one, r- no, that can't be right. Uh, okay, number one, f- Halloween. Number two, wrong turn. Number three, hostile. I can already see this doesn't make sense. And number four, piranha. You have two that are right, but in the wrong spot. And none that are in the none that are spot. in the right spot. Okay, I I actually needed that. Uh, this is my last guess. This is your last up. guess? Okay, let's see. Okay, you can do so it. that means wrong turn is not number two. It is also not number one, but it has to be in this top four. So that means it's either three or four. 
Uh, I'm going to guess three. So that takes care of wrong turn. Um, you know, it's exciting as I came up with this idea and I was like, man, I hope I can fill an hour with this. And we're totally going to fill an hour with this. It's as long the filling the time is not a problem. It's hopefully people are entertained by my brain I'll, trying I'll, to work this I'll, out. Oh, yeah. I'll make it. I'll make it interesting. Uh, so I'm going to say wrong turn is number three there. You, I only had two correct that last time. Yeah. So if wrong turn is correct in one of them, and maybe hostile is the other one that's correct, which would mean perhaps Friday and Hellraiser are the last two that are correct. And in that case, I'm going to say hostile and Hellraiser, I think, are the right ones. Let me okay. please, give me a moment to yeah. check my logic here. I'm also really hoping that I haven't accidentally given you any wrong. I don't think oh, I have, but it's hard to, I'm also realizing how hard it is to do without, because when you play the actual board game, there's little pieces that you mark. So like a red piece indicates it's correct and in the right spot and a white indicates it's correct, but not, but like, I'm just mm. looking at this and kind of mentally. Yeah. So hopefully I haven't fucked this up. Okay. This is going to be my logic uh, that I'm going to quickly double check my previous answers with. I think the four are going to be Wrong Turn, Hostile, Hellraiser, and Friday. So if that is correct, that first time I answered, I had three right. Wrong Turn, Hostile, and Friday are among them. Piranha would have been wrong. Next time, I had three right. Piranha would have to be the wrong one, meaning Hostile, Wrong Turn, and Hellraiser were right. Next one, I had three right with one of them in the correct spot. And Piranha's on there, so that would be the wrong one. The other three would be Friday, Wrong Turn, and Hostile, which would be right. And then last time I only had two right, meaning Halloween and Piranha were wrong, but Hostile and Wrong Turn were correct. None of those were in the right spot, so that means Hostile can't be three. So that means Wrong Turn is three. Okay, Hostile uh, could be four. If it is, Friday can't be one. So that means Friday would have to be two. And Hellraiser would have to be one. So let me double check all my logic on this one. First time I guessed, none of them in the right spot. Yes, that would check out. Second one, I had one in the right spot. Now I'm the mastermind, step aside. That doesn't check out. Fuck! Then that means, I think if I do a simple switch here and put Hostile at, the, no, no, Hellraiser at three, as the right no no <laughs> giving you a minute <laughs> oh no giving you some one minute oh man if i had more time to sit here and think wrong turn can't be number two has to be three or four okay uh i'm i i don't have the time to logic yeah. this out so i'm just gonna guess okay one friday two hostile this is already wrong. Th er, three Hellraiser, four wrong turn. Oh, you're so close. Ugh. Let me, I'll give you the top four. You ready? Yeah. Number one is Friday the 13th. 12 movies, 39 nude scenes. Okay. Number two, Hellraiser. 10 movies, 24 nude scenes. Okay. I love Friday has such a, like, there's such a big job. How much? What did they say? 30 something? 39 nude scenes. Again, I don't. Don't add me. I know. Yeah. Go to like Google the Mr. Skin study. Not while you're at work. But I mean, they. in its defense, it does have 12 movies. That's a fucking lot of movies in a series. Yeah. And the remake is full yeah. of breasts. Number three. <laughs> wrong turn. Okay. Seven movies. 17 nude scenes. Number four, Piranha. Five movies, sixteen. It was Piranha edged out Hostel. It was yes, Hostel is five, of and course. it was killing me because you at one point you had it right. You were saying Friday Hellraiser, wrong turn, then Hostel, and you kept switching Hostel and Piranha in your logic, and that's what made me think, oh my god, did I give you the wrong clue? Shit. And did you accident? But you were so close. Let me go through. Uh, so Hostel is three movies, fourteen nude scenes. Uh, number six, Silent Night, Deadly Night, six movies, 14 nude scenes. I feel like Joe Bob. Seven, <laughs> Halloween, 13 movies, 13 nude scenes, which I think is awesome. I don't know. Is it, I, does that, that cannot be correct. 
Yeah, that seems right. Because Again, Rob, I don't. Halloween 2 from Rob Zombie. I filled. know. <laughs> Eight Amityville, 23 movies. 23 movies. What? 23 Amityville movies. That what is also. I, I don't trust that. Nine nude scenes. That can't be right. Nine Nightmare on Elm Street, nine movies, eight nude scenes. I knew Nightmare would be the lowest. Yeah. Yeah. Also, some fun stats from this Mr. Skin study that I thought were really interesting. So here we go. According to Mr. Skin, horror actually has less nudity than drama, comedy, crime, and action. 61% of characters that go naked in a horror die uh, in this top in their top 13 horror movie franchises. I'm not sure what the next uh, movies are after that top 10. ten. Yeah. Uh, a fifth of those deaths happen while they are nude, while the person is nude. Um, this is interesting. In Mr. Skin's database, because Mr. Skin isn't just horror. It's like all movies. It's just oh, yeah. where's the nudity. And they have... Um, they listed how many titles from their top genres have nudity in them. Number one, drama films have 11,519 titles in their database have nudity in them. Number two, comedy with 8,568. Number three, crime. I'm not sure what like counts as a crime also if these movie. are exclusive can something yeah i again I, this, I just thought this was kind of a neat mm-hmm. list 8203 titles for action 3416 number five is horror with 3091 titles hmm. yeah statistically less nudity than I'm going to need I, some peer review yeah, on this yeah <laughs> again i i would be interested if anyone knows more about him. Mr. Skin, please tell me how you collected your data. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do one more. The, we'll see if this one is even that fun. I was trying to come up with... Because I, I was trying to find lists of like horror like stats or numbers, and all I could fucking find online is just horror villains listed by kills. And I'm like, yep. well, I can't do that. I'll... James, that's yeah. not fun at all. Jason's number one. That's all we talk about on this channel <laughs> anyway. That's what the whole thing is. And I wanted to find, like, I was trying to find how, and I don't know why I was thinking someone had done this already. I think I just assume all horror fans are as weird as, you know, like someone would have done this already. Like how long uh, each final girl spends running on screen or like who is like objectively the most physically fit like who has the most like who can like lift the like if you did the math and yeah i was even looking on the subreddit they did the math to see if there were any horror ones that's a great subreddit um or data is beautiful or i wanted to see i was looking for script databases to see (laughs) um what first name in horror movies is the most lethal to have. Like, mm. what's the most common name for a victim in a horror movie? It's probably John. It's pretty, yeah. <laughs> but I, I thought that would be kind of fun. But anyway, I came up with this kind of goofy one. Um, I got all this data from ZipRecruiter. And so this this is going to change. You know, if you're looking stuff up, it's going to change. Who know? You know, this is like averages. It's all, this is pretty loose, like, you know. Uh, these are pretty loose stats here. This is mm-hmm. just for fun. Um, horror villains, how much they make at their day job. What? Or how much money they make at... Some of these I fudged a little bit. They're like their income. Like what's their yearly income? And, okay. And th- these are... So I, I grabbed average national incomes for these jobs from ZipRecruiter. Again. Okay. Okay. These are, you know, these yeah. are... Uh, and we're talking 2020. Yes, this is 2020 okay. average national incomes. So here we go. We have John Kramer, who is a civil engineer. Oh, okay. Nice, nice, nice. Norman Bates is our motel manager. Got it. Stephen Wilkins, who is the principal in Trick or Treat, the school principal. Oh, yes. Principal, yes. Um, Pennywise is a clown, <laughs> a birthday clown. <laughs> Leatherface, a butcher. Okay. Hannibal Lecter, psychiatrist. Oh. And the tall man, the funeral director. <laughs> uh, that's seven. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Who did I know? Oh, Dr. Frankenstein, medical scientist. Medical scientist. Medical scientist? Medical scientist. What the fuck does that mean? Um, I don't know. I had to narrow it down on some recruiter, though. And that just seemed like that. Medical made scientist. The most sense. That sounds like he It's is- just like science, like science dealing with. The so, body. so it'd be like research, right? Not actually surgeon. So it's not surgeon. 
No, this okay. is, I think this is this is like research and stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, probably more applied research than basic, but you want me to name the top four? Yeah, let's get our top four earners. Highest grossing. Who, yeah, who, okay. who's just wilding out? And like, yeah, who didn't even like need to be, a, you know? Yeah. I feel like, you know, if you're maybe you're desperate and you, you've got like less to, to mm-hmm. lose, you're going to be a horror villain, but it's the ones that are pretty cush or I just have a comfy life. Okay, I I feel like this one is feels the easiest to me out of these. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a pretty solid idea of who will constitute the top four. It's it's the order okay. that I think will be an issue. Um, let's put Kramer at number one, civil engineer. Let's put Lecter at number two. Uh, what's he listed as? A psych- psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. Uh, three, we'll do Frankenstein with the medical scientist. So those three, 100% are in this top four. Uh, after that, it gets pretty you know, less academic, um, more uh, working class maybe. I don't know if that's right. But these people are, you know, there's a difference. The the three I listed are white collar. The value we place on like manual or like physical labor is a lot of bullshit. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Uh, Because a lot of these, yeah, we have uh, Wilkins in education as a high school principal. Um, it's weird. I, I think he. I was looking to see if he was high schooler. It, ju- it just says school principal. Yeah. Um. I don't know how much a funeral director makes. Right. Kind of wild card. That Pennywise one. has got to be at the fucking bottom of this as a clown. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll say tall man for my fourth. So yeah, that's my list: John Kramer, Hannibal Lecter, Victor Frankenstein, tall man. You have three right, but they're in the wrong spot. Okay. Pretty sure the top three are my three that are right. So let me cross off Tall Man and reorder some stuff. I'll put Lecter as one, uh, which means Frankenstein has to be two, which means Kramer has to be three. And for four, I will throw in fucking not Pennywise. Uh, butcher, butcher or Principal or Motel. I'll, I'll say Wilkins with the principal. Maybe some uh, maybe some bougie private schools are driving up that average. Okay, read your order again. Number one, Hannibal Lecter. Number two, Victor Frankenstein. Number three, John Kramer. Number four, Stephen Wilkins. You got it. That's oh! it. Yeah. I'll read you these averages, by the way. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, I don't really knows, understand. Where I, I think these numbers actually are pulled from like current listings it's like what they're offering okay and you know regional variants like every time i've googled a job i've had on one of these websites it's so off yeah yeah okay so here we go yeah so our top our number one hannibal lecter psychiatrist he's making two hundred and sixty six thousand four hundred seventy four dollars a year national average come on hannibal you can buy all the fancy food you want without (laughs) having to kill people that's why he's such a good villain (laughs) Uh, number two is Dr. Frankenstein, our medical scientist, 88,324. All right. Number three, John Kramer, civil engineer, 78,472. I thought that would be a six digit job. Civil, civil engineer, engineer. You know? I have, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it, is. it should I don't be. Fucking know. If or, they're the people designing our bridges. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I have similar thoughts about a lot of these jobs. <laughs> yeah. Just right. like. Like okay, like whatever a, Wilkins is getting paid isn't enough. <laughs> uh, Wilkins, school principal. Uh, he's our number four, seventy-seven thousand five hundred sixteen. Then number five, and I'm sorry, I did not put these in the correct order. <laughs> number five is the tall man. Our funeral director makes about fifty thousand four hundred sixty-two dollars. Um, number six, I think the next one I have is. Pennywise? What? Yeah, the clown, $44,432. We pay butchers less than clowns? Our next is Leatherface Butcher, 33215 And then last Norman. is Norman Bates, the motel manager, 32765 Oh, damn. Wow. I know. I was thinking about that really low salary for a butcher, and I'm like... That person is preparing food. You and also, I mean? like, they're also doing the job that is like one of those jobs where if 
everyone had to do it themselves would drastically alter behavior. Yeah. Like, no one wants to butcher animals, but everyone wants to everyone eat wants meat. Everyone wants to eat them, yeah. So, yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> butchers should be paid so much, especially because the meat industry makes so much fucking money, and butchers, are they're, they're preparing. You have to, like, know anatomy of animals. Yeah. And there's so much you have to know, and I don't know. I just feel like that's... Not fair that they don't get their. their <laughs> really share. pay them less than clowns. Uh, <laughs> hey, clowns! Clowns work hard. I think all these jobs should get paid. A lot everyone more. should get paid. Everyone more. should you just get paid more, That's except it. for CEOs. They except make it for up. yeah, except for um, Patrick Bateman, who I didn't even bother putting on this list because he would just make too much money. <laughs> Fucking a uh, stockbroker. Oh, that would have been great. It's funny because I was looking up on Zip. I looked up investment banker and stockbroker, and it came in at like two hundred some thousand. And I was like, bullshit. Wow. Not Patrick Bateman. Patrick Bateman would make. So I, I didn't put him because I just didn't even want it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Hope people had fun listening. Yeah, I know. I hope that was fun. I, I hope they got to play along. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. I hope. Let me know how you did or if there's any that um, you're surprised by, if there's any you knew right away, if anyone knows how we can access the research uh, like the the study done by Mr. Skin, like yeah. how they, I want to know Give more us that data. about their, me- yeah, I just want like the raw data. The, like, oh, d- don't type in raw data around no! Mr. Skin. All right, <laughs> no. be careful with that. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys had fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, how do we start the outro? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can follow Dead Me on social media at Dead Me James on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm at Carebeck, C A R E V E C C on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want merch, deadmeatstore.com. Email deadmeatpod at gmail.com with comments, suggestions, and Mr. Skin data spreadsheets. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we'll be back next week Give with us that bare, bareback data. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week with another fun thing. But until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. This has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>